right there, or we will open fire! So how I created this sequence, let's go through the tools first and then we will take a look inside the tools and I will try to explain how I created this sequence step by step. So first tool was Cargo. This is Kitbash 3D's new software that holds their entire asset library. They have all their kits and all of these kits are packed with everything you might need from buildings to small little props. If you purchase any kits in the past, they're gonna be here open to you and also you can buy a subscription that you pay monthly I believe. Um, because we have an arrangement they are giving me this for free which is super nice everything a 3d artist can ask for basically and this makes me really happy anyway the new kit is not here yet they sent me the kit in advance so I could create this animation for the release but it's when it's out it's gonna say like RB exclusive here and it's gonna be like police station or police department or one of those things so once you have the subscription or if you own one of these kits you can go through here and then click on the one you want. You can choose the resolution of your textures. I go with 2K JPEG usually because it holds a lot less space than PNG. And 2K is mostly enough for me. I barely use any 4K textures. I think 2K is sufficient in many cases. So once you choose your set, so let's try this reception area. It's already downloaded. I just click import. Wait a couple seconds and then it imports it into my Blender project file. Kitbash was usually doing buildings, but now they started doing these interior sets, which I really like. All of these assets are meticulously crafted and art designed, and that contributed a lot into me being able to create this entire sequence in just five, six days. The sets I used was this, the prison cell. You can see the blast. And the most important thing here is, I believe, lighting. So in this scene, I thought the light was terrible. It's too flat. If you look at a movie with a good cinematography, you will see that they never light things flat. You know what are the light sources in this room? The top lights there, right? So I put area lights there to light the entire room, but it's too flat. There is no interest in it. Then I looked at what are other things that I can light the room with. And there is this red clock there so i put a red light here and then i put this lamp here from the other room i still haven't relit this room i took that lamp from this desk and then i put a light outside here it's like a fake moonlight they do that often in movies to add some light coming from the outside and i can even maybe add a picture outside so it is not dark abyss outside and we can see some clouds maybe additionally in this scene i'm using the computer screens as the backlight here and then the key light to light her face is coming from the phone. There is an area light on top of the phone. And I think those are all the lights in the scene. If you try to not light your scenes flat, you can take your scenes from this to this one. And I think this looks a lot better. So good lighting matters a lot. Other tool I used was character creator. So let's go through character creator and try to make a new character. So I have a lot of separately purchased packs here. This one comes with character creator and my main character is this guy. There's a free trial for it so you can download and play around with it. And I suggest that because it's super fun to create these characters. Here's how I created my main character. It was this guy. So I played around with these settings, like everything. I have some favorites here. So I, we can narrow his face down, make it a bit younger, make it a bit older. I played with these brow lowers so it, he looks mad. Made his cheeks go in a little, to make him look skinny. And what I notice is their chest is usually too much out like this. So I would go through the chest and then decrease the chest scale chest height and chest depth this makes it more natural anyway after going through like there is a lot of customization you can do like it's crazy how much customization you can do look at this he's a baby now we can go through here play with every little detail about his ears you can make them so it is asymmetrical which is amazing you can play with the jaw make it asymmetrical make it symmetrical however you want it's so cool Anyway, after you play around with everything here, I go back and then choose a hair. Um, I chose this one for the main character. This was the hair. And if I slap one of these, that's going to change the color. And then I will go back to here, choose the clothes. I believe I just chose this white shirt and then pants. If I have the time for it, I will send my characters to Melniverse and she will do the cloth simulations and designs. 
which I think looks a lot more realistic than these because these just stuck onto the bones of the character. When the clothes are simulated, I believe that looks a lot better. If you go through edit and preference, you can go here and change your preset to Blender. So it is using the Blender's shortcuts. So I didn't even have to adjust to this program. I can just use my muscle memory to navigate here, which is great. After everything is done here, after I create my character, give him clothes and everything, I can add motions here actually. So let's go to some motions. There is motions inside of here, here and choose an idol. It's gonna start playing that animation. And the best part is, if you download a animation from Mixamo or ActorCore, you can just drag and drop it here and it's gonna map the animation without any extra work. So let's try this one. We wait a second and then we have the animation. So you can just throw any animation from anywhere and then you can export it with animation. So if you go export, FPX and clothed character, here you can choose mesh and motion. If you're gonna have a close-up, do it 4K, if not, you can keep it at 2K. And I convert it to JPEG, turn this into 24, current animation, all, and then export. And then in Blender, what you want to do is use this add-on, which is free for Blender. You click import character and it will import the character with all the textures set up correctly, so it looks the best it can. So this is a bit mad, but this is what it brings in and these are the magical tattoos of his and it's using the gradient node that I showed in another video you can check that out that I mixed the tattoos so when I play with this empty here this empty is controlling the mix factor between the tattoos and the emission so if I scale this empty down it is transitioning into emission and if I scale it up it's going back to just a diffuse texture this is the tattoos and then this is the emission and this gradient, this custom gradient node. You can take a look at this or you can watch my other tutorial about this and I go through it step by step. And then that is using this object coordinates with the empty. That's how I created the tattoos. One really important detail about this scene is this shirt actually looks like this. But I added this texture into the alpha socket of this shader. This is a Kitbash 3D texture from Cargo, from their Age of Egypt kit actually. And once I plug that in, this shirt looks much more realistic. Because without it, it looks plastic. And with this added into the alpha, it looks like this. And I scaled it six times because if it's one, the scale looks off. So I made it six and then we have this effect of under of his shirt lighting up. So the way I break this cell door, few things are happening one of them is this door has a shape key imagine this is the door so I will add some and then I will go into the shape keys at a basis so this is what it looks like now and then shape key one I will hold this part and then pull it so the moment he punches so here I will go back one frame add a keyframe to this shape key go one frame forward Make it one, add a keyframe, and at that keyframe it bends. That's what I did to the door. The second thing that's going on is the particles. So for the particles, I used an add-on called RBD Lab. If I want to break anything, that's the add-on I use. It's the best. And let's just break this plane. It is not as interesting as breaking a wall, but I'm just trying to demonstrate how to use the add-on really quickly. So I will start annotation and just draw a few things. Break it according to what you draw. And the annotation go to cell fracture. And then fracture. Give it a second to do its thing. Adding more detail where the lines were. And then clear annotation. Go to rigid bodies. Add rigid body actives. And it break. I don't know. This, this sometimes happens. I will select this collection. Go into object. Rigid body add active. And when you play it, it falls. But if we add another object also make it rigid body, make it passive and animated. Add a keyframe, go a few keyframes forward, add another keyframe, and then when I play it, and then that's basically how I did the wall. And the best part about this add-on is you can add extra particles, like emit from current frame, and it will add extra detail, particles. 
this is not the best demonstration but you get what it's doing right can adjust its size here make the particles a little smaller so it actually looks like dust and you can see how much detail it adds in just a second you can also add smoke simulation or debris like bigger pieces like this so that's what i did for the door the door is also rigid body and there's a force field here pushing the door and the debris forward there is a cube here and then on the ground these are passive rigid bodies so when the door gets here it bumps into that cube and stops there and the final piece the final tool used is embergen so embergen comes with a lot of presets which is what i used for all the fire and explosion effects in this so one of them was these cannons and then the other one was one of these fires i use this for when his fists light up i go into the shape turn this into a sphere make it smaller and then when i play it it's like that i can add a position keyframe so i wanted the position to begin on his shoulders and then go down go a bit forward i counted how many frames it takes for the tattoos to light up and then i put it down for that many keyframes and then when i play it it's already given us the effect we we're looking for and we can play around with the simulation here in the emitter volume if we go here we can make the fuel rate more and it's gonna burn brighter and it's live too this is live fire and smoke simulation which is mind-blowing to me you can go at the end here and then search for export vdb connect it to here and then choose your file where you want to export it to click export now and then you can just bring it in the blender i use f3 and search for vdb press a select everything import it in look at the attribute write it there make the black body intensity one change the temperature okay i lied there is one more tool i use to make the characters talk inside of iClone 8 i recorded the voices so both characters are my voice um i was just testing the program i thought it was it worked fine so i just moved on with those i hope you liked my voice acting here i can record my voice and then using aquilips i can turn that into a script and then it turns it into lip movements here so the other character saying we have some options here so this is what i did for this character i made it smooth you can also choose whispering or shouting this is what i chose for this character i chose yelling and then just brought down some of the intensity for some of the words so it doesn't look too exaggerated and then i chose this face key go into expression made this guy angry i believe sad no angry and then choose one of these play around with this expressiveness for the other guy i chose some other i think i chose neutral facial expression that's how i created the talking animations character creator i got these characters really quickly didn't customize them much just like through the presets through a beard and hair and some clothes on them so i downloaded these animations from actor core here you can see that they're running and falling down and then this guy's panic chaos run just downloaded those and then threw them into character creator like i showed you before just drag and drop and then i had two characters in the scene in minutes which was mind-blowing so when i was a kid i thought creating scenes like this would take millions of dollars and hundreds of people working on one shot and it is incredible now that we can use a free software with some of the paid products in there you can keep everything free as well that's what i did for my first three years blender was free and every tool i used was free i tried to find free models i tried to go outside and scan rocks and nature assets i tried to model my own stuff but now this animation took me six days which is incredibly mind-blowing to me when you use the right tools the things you can create in such short amount of time you can just tell your story you don't have to focus on creating these intricate details of the building it is just my approach i just want to get to the story that i have in my mind quicker as 3d artists sometimes we can get hung up on the wrong details and i think casey neistat said it best story is king everything serves the king all of this is just here to serve the story thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next one